Hello everyone and welcome to my new video. What is this video about? Well, it's time for part three of my series of building generative musical instruments in Max for Live to run in Ableton. So far we've done a little kind of self-playing mono synth and we've done a kind of little self-playing drum machine and now I'm going to try and make something that makes chords that pro provides multiple notes of a chord in a scale and also like a sort of poly synth as well. I'm quite excited about this episode and I hope that you will be too. So let's get a Max instrument, drop it in, and then let's open Max and get started. Okay, here's our Max instrument. So I'm going to start with a phaser at, uh, sorry, 1.0.0 at lock one. Okay, this is going to drive the patch. Really all I'm going to do um, is actually just generate one note every bar which is going to get scaled um and then that's going to set the frequency of a, a, an oscillator and then maybe i might do some stuff like run it through some filters or something but then i'm going to pack it into a poly object and then create multiple instances of that single one patch in order to get like a chord and all of these notes are going to be kind of generated randomly it's all going to be like in tune with the, the other devices that we've made it should all work it should all sound perfectly nice and might maybe inspire you a little bit in those moments when you're a little bit stuck. So we're going to do the same trick we did before. We're going to report the delta of that ramp. And I'm going to say, give me a one when that is uh, less than zero, greater than zero. What did I type? Less than zero. Let's make a live scope. And then I'm going to start the transport, start the transport in Ableton. Okay, is the transport running? Yes, it is. Okay, so we're going to get... Yeah, okay, so we're getting a single sample blip at the start of each bar. Very good. So I think that somewhere in the past, in a previous life or the other day, I saved a snippet of the quantizer. There we go. Okay, so just so that I don't have to go through that all again. This is um, the patch from the first episode that will allow us to take um, signals that go from zero to one and quantize them to like a diatonic scale, which I believe is in B flat major. Um, so, and I've saved that as a little snippet. I would app strongly recommend saving snippets. It's so useful. Imagine having to patch that every video. So I've made that snippet. Um, okay, so I'm gonna make a noise. Make a noise here. And I'm going to take the absolute value of that noise and I'm going to put it into a sample and hold. And I'm going to trigger that sample and hold with this single sample blip here, which is going to give me a random value of somewhere between zero and one. Okay. Um, then I'm going to plug that into my quantizer here. And then I'm going to plug that into... Um, Right, let me think about what I've done here. Multiply by seven, round to one, divide by seven, multiply by 12, round to one, divide by... Yeah, I don't actually really need to do this. I'll take that out. And instead, I will just simply add um, a signal here to set my octave. And the way that I did that last time was that I made a signal of 12 and multiplied it by a number... And then that is going to be the octave at which the scale starts. So let's put that in there. And if I go to like multiply by five, then we're going to go up to roughly around, um, well, we can actually have a look. If we make a snapshot, snapshot one, and then make a K slider. Oh, I always type K, K slider go into the inspector and let's make the number of notes one uh 127 and the lowest note zero maybe let's see if that's worked zoom out a little bit let's see what that gives us so that's kind of playing a note somewhere around here and okay so we're roughly in this octave here that is very good okay so we can now do m to f and connect that number to our cycle. Uh, sorry, connect that number to our M2F and then connect that to our cycle. So that takes the MIDI number and converts it to the frequency. Okay, this is very good. I uh, kind of just don't really want that for now. In fact, I'm going to delete it. Um, right, and then I'm going to take that single sample blip 
slide that by something like 10,000 samples. And let's see if that's worked. And then I'm going to make a multiply option. Oh my God, I can't type. It's very early in the morning. <laughs> um, and I haven't got my typing warmed up. So let's put that in there and then let's make a live gain. Connect the live gain to the multiply here and then get the plug out. Come down here and connect that to the plug out. Ooh, there we go. Okay. Okay, so now that is just sort of making some little plucks. Okay, that's nice. But that's just a sine wave. That's very nice. What if we want something that's like a little bit more exciting, got a little bit more content in it? Well, we can use other oscillator types. We can use something like saw. Um, we have rec, rect. Um, what other ones do we have? Triangle, which needs a phaser, I think. But what if we could make a synthesizer oscillator that generates a waveform every single time it gets a new note in our patch? Wouldn't that be exciting? Yes, it would. Agree with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a buffer. Make a buffer here. And I'm going to call the buffer, bu buffer, the, the buffer poly synth one. Uh, maybe I maybe should put the dash 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 in. Let's put the dash 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 polysynth one. And I'm going to say um, at samples. How many samples should it have? Let's say four samples. Okay. And then I'm going to make a waveform object at buffer name dash 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 polysynth one. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a patch to write some random samples into that buffer every single time it gets a bang. And I'm going to do that with, let me think about this, an Uzi and a Gen Expert. So I can't remember the exact um, thing I have to type in. I'm not very good with Expert, I'm afraid, but in the... Um, in the gen help file, there's, there it is, it's this. I'm going to copy this and paste it here. Let's see if this works. So with gen expo, you can basically type in the expression of what you want the gen patch to be, which is brilliant. So now when I click this button, I get a noise between um, minus one and one, which is brilliant because like if I had to do it the other way, if I, I had to do like random and then I'd have to do scale from zero to 100 minus one to one or whatever. And it's sort of, but with this, you can just type it in. Um, I'm a little bit new to expert. I think it's a little bit advanced for me, I'll be honest, <laughs> but I'm going to use this to fill my buffer when I trigger a button. So if I was to like make a print object, and we like had a look at the print object and I trigger the um, gen object with the Uzi. And let's see if we can see the print object. So if I bang that. So what it's done is that it's generated four random numbers between minus one and one. Perfect. I'm going to use those numbers to fill a buffer um, because samples generally work from minus one to one, although I think maybe they don't entirely have to, but if we want to make a synthesizer, we're going to need those numbers. So let's make a poke. I think we want poke. Um, and we're going to write to dash, 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 polysynth. Whoops, polysynth one. And we want to take the number and the index. So this is the, this output of Uzi is the index. Let's just go from the index. Ah, yes, yeah, sample index. So we can come out of the Uzi for the sample index and then out of the gen for the value to write. Let's see if this works. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> okay, why doesn't that work? Oh, I know why. It's because I spelt it wrong. Polysynth1 with a space. Shouldn't have done that. Hey, now we've got it. Let's check. All right, let's bang that again. Okay, uh, no problem. We are not writing to the first sample. Maybe we need to minus one here. Let's minus, minus one here. Okay, now we're writing to 
the buffer and we're getting yes this is good this is working sweet so let's ditch all this stuff this all looks very nice to me cool so that is our little so we're not only going to generate wow this is so exciting we're not only going to generate like music we're going to generate actual waveforms all in the same patch so we're going to do this when the phaser wraps back around to zero we're going to take an edge and the edge is quite a useful little object it'll take a signal and when it detects an edge it will send a bang and then we can connect that to that and then every time that wraps back round we're going to get a different waveform for our synth now if we come back down here to our synth we can create oh my goodness me where am i going right swap out this for a wave and we give it the same name as the buffer dash 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 poly synth damn it can't spell poly synth one um with a zero start point zero end point and one channels connect the m2f to no 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 first make a phaser because a wave object needs a phaser well it needs another oscillator a phaser is good so I think you can read through it with with cycles as well maybe other other types of waveforms anyway so we need a phaser so now we've got our midi note being generated by all this random stuff here converted to a frequency to drive this phaser which is going to drive this wave object which is going to uh, play the sound that's being generated by our oscillator that we're oh i can zoom in and out like that can i oh that's good right so let's have a listen shall we see if it's doing it no it isn't doing it why I spelled polysynth wrong. Dash, 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 polysynth. Yes, I spelled polysynth wrong. <laughs> I can't spell first thing in the morning. There we go. So they probably will sound quite similar. No, that one sounds a little bit different. So every time that we go back round a bar, we get a different waveform. If we wanted maybe it to be a little bit more rich, we could have more samples. Let's add 16 samples to our buffer and tell the Uzi to bang 16 times. Yeah. They've, they've got a little bit more harmonics. I'm going to put it back down to four. Right? Well, maybe let's try eight. So let's see what eight sounds like. Let's try eight samples. So the wave um, has some interpolation modes, which can make a difference to um, the sound. So currently it's set to linear. If we go to none, that's no interpolation. That is a direct reading from one sample to the other. So a little bit more harsh but might be what you want low quality cosine you can hear how that's softer because there's some interpolation happening between the samples cubic let's stick with linear okay nice so we've got a little generative poly well it's not poly yet we're going to make it poly later a um, couple of things i want to think about um how do i want the amplitude to happen when i was thinking about making this i kind of thought that this would be like a very sort of ambient -y kind of droney polysynth thing kind of ambient works type stuff so i'm not going to actually make it pluck but i might look at some plucky stuff that we can do in another version of this video because the thing is about this idea is that there are loads of different ideas i've got for each thing like this isn't just going to be a definitive polysynth there are like huge huge ideas i've got for what how we can make these things but for this one i'm just going to go for something a bit droney and a bit woozy and a bit swell swell man um so let's take out that slide and instead use a triangle um and say that I want the peak value phase to be at 0 0.5. Now, if I take my phaser, which is driving this patch, and plug it into this triangle, this is what we get. So if we compare that with 
the top phaser is the uh, this top scope is the phaser this bottom scope is the triangle now that is going into the that is a, a bipolar signal and i want it to be unipolar so i'm going to add one and then multiply by 0.5 and then now I think now I just need to check that the phase is right. Yeah. So when it wraps back down to one, this triangle starts at one. Good. So I want to use that to um, drive my amplitude. So get this type of stuff. Uh, okay, so another thing I would like to add is a little bit of down tune, a little bit of out of tuneness to make it a little bit kind of, you know, not perfect. So I'm going to zoom in a bit here. Um, I could take this sample and hold that I've made here, multiply that by a very, very small amount, like 0 0.1. I mean, it's going from 0 to 1 anyway, so if we make it... Um, if we multiply it by 0 0.1, we're going to get some very, very small numbers. Yeah. And then I kind of want to add that. Um, where can I add that? Here? Or here? Let's try here. Let's just add this random number to our signal. That's just going to send everything a bit out of tune. It's not really noticeable. Let's try 0 0.5. Okay, that's a little bit more noticeable. Tiny, tiny little bit of out of tuneness. Okay, that's fine. Um, anything else I want to add? That is just, that's going to be very, very subtle, very discreet. Um, anything else I want to add? Maybe a filter? I mean, we could maybe try and add some filtering in here. Let's go with the, um, let's go with a one pole or a low res. Low res. Low res, please. Yeah. Um, and then we can take this triangle and multiply that by something like 5,000. And connect that to here, connect that to our low res. We might get a little bit of filtering. Okay, a little bit too much resonance, so I'll say zero, zero here. Hmm. Still quite resonant, even though I've said no. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna swap that out for a state variable. Filter. Let's go for state variable filter. Let's come in. Let's come out the low pass and do that again. Let's do that. Multiply that by 5,000 and let's say zero, zero here. Um, yeah, connect that to that. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, so a uh, couple of things. Let's keep that on the outside. Let's make a live number here and say um, the range we want to be from two to six, maybe. This is going to be our octave. So we're kind of in C Dorian or B flat, B flat major. Yeah, B flat major. Okay. Um, so now what I need to do. Ah, when we stop the transport, that is important. Uh, so let's, uh, yeah, let's deal with that. Let's make a plug phase. No, plug sync. Damn it. Plug sync. Right. Let me just have a quick look at the help file. So the plug sync is going to report um, stuff about Ableton Live's transport. Yeah, because when the transport stops, I want the sound to stop. So 
Uh, let's see. I start the transport. Brilliant. So I'll simply take that and use that again to multiply the signal. Which might seem a little bit strange, but we're going to do it. Uh, probably don't need that. Let's see if this works. So now if I... Okay, so when I stop the transport, it will stop the whole patch. But there's a little bit of a little bit of a click. So we could maybe do a line. We could do line tilde and we could say, uh, make a mess. Oh my goodness me. Make a message here, dollar sign one. Um, and I think a comma and then say one, let's say, yeah, 100 milliseconds. Is this going to work? Let's see if this works. No, maybe I don't need the comma. Take the comma out. Come on, take out the comma. Okay, there we go. Ah, yeah, that's working. So when I start the transport, it's going to slide up. When I stop the transport, it's going to slide down. Yeah, that could be quite useful for just taking out some of those clicks. These are all things that are kind of important. No, nobody likes clicks. So now when I start the transport, yeah, and I stop it, no clicks. Perfect. Now let's pack this into a poly. We're going to need to pack everything into the poly. Uh, only the things we need, though. We don't need any of these scopes. All of this stuff, let's take out that bang. We don't need that. All of this stuff is very important. Let's get it organized. We don't really need that anymore. Um, actually, let's keep that. Maybe we can see it in the top part of the patch. Right, I'm a little bit new to poly, so we're going to do some really basic stuff. Even though I've been using Max for nearly 15 years, I've only really started exploring poly in the last month. But it's really good. I really like it. There's so, so much you can do with it. So um, let's get all of this stuff. And I'm going to copy it. I'm going to make a new patch. I'm going to paste that in. And I'm going to make one object out, oh, out one, connect that there. And then I'm going to save this patch, save it as. Now, this is kind of quite important. I'm going to see if I can save it in this folder here. And I'm just going to call this dash, 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 poly, poly synth one poly. <laughs> Bit of a stupid long name, but that's fine. Okay, let's close that. Um, let's delete all of the, ah, I didn't make an inlet for the octave. Um, that's okay. We might be able to fix that. Let's delete all of this. Let's make a poly object and type dash, 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 poly synth one poly at voices four. Um, let's double click this. It works, but we need an inlet for to set our octave. So what we can do now, this is um, currently in read only. So we need to click this thing here, this pen to unlock it so that we can make an edit, but we can do all of that. So let's make an in uh, message input for poly. Yeah, in one and connect that here. Let's see if this works. Can we add like a comment or something at, at a comment octave? Let's see if this works. Okay, save this now, close it, come back here, reload this. And that looks like it's worked. Okay, and then let's see if it's making any noise. Start the transport. No, it ain't. <laughs> oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's working. Right, let's see if we can set our octave here. Four, octave four. Yeah, it's generating the waveforms. Ah, I said at voice four, <laughs> not voices. Okay, let's try this now. Whoa. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Some of them are... Yeah. Maybe I should do that with a signal. OK. 
Okay, let's stop the transport. Um, you know what? I'm actually just going to hard code that in. I'm not confident enough yet with Polly to, <laughs> to know how to do that. I'm just going to multiply. I'm just going to add. I'm going to take that out. I'm just going to add 48 here. Add 48. Okay, let's save that. Close it. Come back out here. Try it. At voices four, delete that. See if that's worked. Double click it. Okay, it's all looking pretty good to me. Okay, start the transport. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Can you hear that chorus thing that's happened? Because I added that little bit of out of tuneness. The waveform looks very, very weird. I think maybe there's some issues there with perhaps like DC offset. Maybe look how some of them are. This doesn't really look right. Sounds brilliant though. Okay, I'm excited. Right, so let's just ditch that and uh, let's maybe just add these. Um, add these to the presentation. Uh, go to the patcher inspector and say open in presentation. We can just kind of put these here like that. Let's just rename this to something that makes sense. Volume. Okay, let's save it as um in our special folder so we'll call it ep3 chords and poly synth i love it set device width save it close so each note new note let's maybe delete it and reload it Oh, the moment of truth. Is it going to work? Is it going to work? No. Why? Why don't you work in my video? Ah, I didn't freeze it. Of course. Okay, I'm going to need to freeze it. Yeah, because the patch, the poly patch. Is it going to work now? Yes. Okay, so one thing that maybe we should do is add in, um, let's unfreeze it. And I'm just going to put in a limmy here. Just to keep those voices under wraps. Save. Oh, wait. Freeze. Freeze and save. Is it going to do it? Yes. Love it. I love Max. Oh, that limmy is working quite hard a little bit on those voices, but I guess the thing to do is to maybe just attenuate them a little bit. So I'm going to add uh, my little generative uh, folder thing here um, and bring in my more of my devices. Let's try our mono synth here. Hybrid reverb in here, maybe. Oh, hang on. Let's put it on. Let's put it on a return track. Here we go.
Okay, I'm very, very pleased with myself. <laughs> and if you've made it this far to the video, leave a pineapple emoji in the comments. So there you go. That is how you can make a generative polysynth that plays chords. And that's not even scratching the surface. Um, I'd like to get into doing more rhythmic stuff, ways of generating rhythms in order to trigger chords that have nice rhythmic vibes about it stabs chops funky funk more funky stuff this is just kind of a starting point so i'm going to go and put this on my patreon now where if you'd like to support this channel you can do that there and you'll get access to this project and every project i've done in any video ever and it all goes towards uh, me making more content like this which i hope you enjoy and of course, if you sign up there, you are free to contact me and give me some ideas for things you'd like me to make videos about because sometimes I get a little bit stuck for ideas. I'll be honest, it's pretty hard coming up with ideas all the time. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching. See you for the next episode, which I'm going to... So we're going to chop up some samples. We're going to chop up drum loops uh, in a generative fashion using Max for Live. So I think you're going to want to watch that one because you like that stuff, don't you? Okay, cheers, bye.